Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our SU27 and we're going to look at the HUD modes and the HUB symbology on those nodes. So this video will cover the SU27, the SU23, the 3, 3 MiG-29 variants and the J11A. Although these planes are not identical, they're similar enough that we can just show it with one of them and we won't lose any major functionality. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the controls we're going to be using today. All we're going to be using is the one two three four five six seven and eight keys as standard here are the keyboard commands so the one key puts are hud in navigation mode and there are actually four types of navigation mode so let's show the first one so i press one and this one here i mean it's not really actually nav a navigation mode it's just our default flying mode just giving us the absolute basic information so let's have a look what we've got. We've got our current speed here in kilometers an hour, and that's IAS, indicated airspeed. If you want to know about the different kinds of airspeed, then we have a video about that in our educational section. Here is our longitudinal accelerometer, this triangle here. We are deaccelerating if it's on the left, like it is now. We are not accelerating at all if it's in the middle, and we are accelerating if it's up here on the right. Here is our heading tape. It shows our current heading where the where the arrow is pointing here so you can see that we're currently on a heading of 295 here is our current altitude it's in meters and barometric until we get down to 1500 meters at which point it becomes a radio altimeter symbology here is our vertical velocity so if this arrow was at this middle section here we would not be climbing or diving at all as it's up here and with the number eight we can see that we are climbing now i'm not actually sure whether this is meters per second or hundreds of meters per minute uh, but so uh, we are climbing with a figure of eight and if it was below this down here somewhere we will be diving at that amount here is our pitch it's currently saying six meaning that we are essentially aiming up in pitch at six degrees if we were aiming down below the horizon then we would be diving at that number here is our horizontal bar the uh, complete bar here this line here this line here and this line here are our aircraft datum they show our current situation in terms of roll so if i were to roll the aircraft you can see that it's tilted over by the equivalent amount and we can gauge the roll because that would be zero that would be 30 that would be 60 and that there would be 90 degrees roll so we're just over 30 degrees roll at the moment this cross here is where our aircraft is facing, it's where it's pointing. Now that's not the same thing as where the aircraft is travelling, that would be called a path vector. This is just where the aircraft is pointing. So let's press 1 again and get to our first, if you like, proper navigation mode. So this is our first navigation mode, ENR, en route mode, our basic INS system, inertial navigation systems method of negotiating waypoints. So we will have a waypoint. If I look on the map here, you can see that's us there and that's our waypoint out there, our waypoint one. So I'm just going to select our waypoint one here. So waypoint one selected. So we've got some information to say that we're on route mode here. We are 18.4 kilometers away from our selected point of interest. That is waypoint one. Here is our navigation mark here, the circle. This circle will guide us to the point of interest, to the waypoint one. What we will do is put our basically maneuver. So our cross here is in the center of that circle there, and that will take us to our waypoint one. As well as that, the waypoint one has speed and altitude associated with it. And this up here now is telling us what speed is desired at that waypoint. And this here is telling us what altitude is desired at that waypoint. And I cover this fully in the navigational and ILS videos that I've done in the SU27 playlist. Okay, let's go to our next navigation mode. So we're going to press one again, RTN. Essentially, everything is the same, except it says RTM, which is return. So now this navigation mark is not guiding us to a waypoint. It's guiding us to guiding us to an approach point of a selected airfield. So it's, sele it's a selected our default airfield, wherever that may be. It's telling us that the approach point, which is 10 miles out from the threshold of that airfield or that runway, is 12.7 kilometers away. And again, we would guide to it by following the navigation mark here. And the last navigation mode, we have landing mode or ILS mode. This takes us from that 10 mile approach point down to the touchdown on the runway. Again, we've got a full video of it, so I'm not going to go through it. But otherwise, the symbology is all as we spoke about last time. OK, next we're going to press the 2 key to take us through to BVR mode. 
So BVR is a combat mode beyond visual range. It means fighting that's going to occur outside of 10 miles away from our aircraft. So if, it's, if the hostile is beyond 10 miles, we'll be using this BVR mode. So to show you the full symbology, the first thing is I'm going to have to lock up a target. We're not going to talk about how to do that because that's covered in a different video. Okay, so we've turned our radar on and we can see a possible target up here. But first of all, let's start in the same place as last time. What we can say is here's our speed, but it's no longer indicated airspeed, it's now true speed. That is a different measure of speed, and it is a measure that is much more useful for combat. It's a tactical measure of speed. We can Again, our accelerometer here says we are de-accelerating. De our heading, our altitude are the same as last time. Now on the right side, rather than having vertical velocity, what we've now got is symbology relating to our radar. So this again is elevation, but it's actually the elevation of the radar. So if our radar dish at the front, you imagine it can point up and point down. So we've currently got it in the middle here saying zero. This means that it is a flat elevation pointing forward. We could push it up or push it down. We won't go over how the controls and whatnot because we're gonna cover that in a different video. But just to show you that we can, you can see I've now pushed it up to five elevation. And we can see this here is the coverage of our radar, this line here, up at this angle. This is the ascent, this is what we can see within our HUD at the moment, between that tick and that tick there. And we can also aim it down if you want, so there we would be aiming our radar down to minus 5. So that's the radar elevation bar. Here is the currently, current weapon selected, we currently have an R27ER. Here, ILL, I use this just as symbology to let us know that we have our radar turned on at the moment. Here 10.0 is our predicted target range in kilometers. This horizontal bar here is representative of our radar azimuth. So if you imagine our dish radar in the front of the aircraft, as well as pointing it up and down, we can point it left and we can point it right. And just to show you, we can change that. So I've changed it so it's now pointing, aiming to the left. Here is our mode, we're on BVR mode. Here is our radar mode, so that we are currently, I believe, SCN is scan. This here is our ranging bar, and at the moment it's telling us the scale of our radar display. So that would be zero down there, that's 50 kilometers. And just to show you that we can change that, you can have that as 25 or 100 kilometers or, or whatever you choose to have that as. We've got ILV here, interleaved. It's telling you the PRF of our pulse repetition frequency of our radar. It can have different PRFs. And this is the interleaved mode, which is telling us that it is switching between modes. And we can change that. High, medium, or interleaved. We've got our roll indicator here again. And here we've got our radar cursor, commonly known as TDC, Target Designator Controller. And we can scroll that about the screen with the relevant keys, like so. And now I'll quickly lock a target up just to show the change in HUD symbology. So I've locked a target up there. Again, we'll cover how to do that properly in a different video. But just to show, we have a horizontal line here again. We have our target circle here showing where the target is. Our range bar is the same, but it has extra symbology. This is where the target is on the range bar, how far away the target is. Here is our R max, R lethal and R minimum range firing guides. They are guides that sh um, tell us essentially when to fire the missile. We'll go over that. Again, in another video, our AFF marker here, telling whether it's a friend or a foe. AFR means it's a friend in this case. This dot here shows the current azimuth and pitch deviation or deflection of the radar. So we can see that the radar is slightly tilted to down and to the left to track the target. And we have target extra our target information here. We have the target's true speed in kilometers an hour here and the target's altitude here, ASL. You can see as well that our radar mode has changed because we have the target locked. And finally, we have our target aspect it's displayed by an arrow here. You can see it's pointing downwards, which means the hostile is heading towards us. If it was facing upwards, the hostile would be, would be heading away. Next, we're going to show the neck, the first of our close range. This So this is BVR, obviously long range mode. Next, we're going to show our first close range mode, vertical scan mode. So I'm going to unpause. I'm going to press, I'm going to unlock the target. I'm going to press three. And that's got our close range vertical scan mode. Now for this to function, we need to be within 10 miles of the target. So I'm just gonna fast forward and get within 10 miles. Okay, before we lock the target, let's have a quick look at the symbology for vertical scan mode. We have our speed here and we're back to IAS rather than true speed. Our accelerometer is the same, heading take the same. We've got our altimeters the same. 
Here, these two vertical bars here show the extent of the radar scan. The radar will be scanning essentially between these two bars when we press the lock button. And it will not be scanning outside the bars, hence the name of the mode. This stuff's the same here. We've got our pitch indicator here of plus 11 degrees. Our selected weapon here, we now have an R73 selected. We can tell our radar is on, our radar is scanning, we're in vertical scan mode. We also have our EO on for the first time. This chap here is the EO or the IRST. This is not the radar, it is an optical scanner. And so we've got that set now. Uh, we've got that engaged now as well as the radar. So we're now going to lock the target sharpish. Okay, so we've got him locked and all I want to show is everything's the same except we have our IFF back here and we have our range scale back we're set to the equivalent relevant distance of 10 kilometers and everything else is the same. So the next thing we're going to show is our boresight scan mode. So we're going to press the 4 button. Similar, but rather than everything is essentially the same as last time, but instead of having the two plumb lines, in this case we have a bore circle here. We have to maneuver to place the aircraft, the hostile aircraft, inside our bore, then press the target lock, and that is where our radar is scanning at the moment. I think I forgot to mention, but the previous mode, this mode, and further modes coming up only work within close range, within visual range, which is considered within 10 miles from the target. So let's just show this guy locking up. And again, we get the full range information. But regards to symbology, we don't need to cover anything here. Next, we're going to go to the next mode, which is 5. So let's do that. So 5 is the helmet-mounted track. So we've got a bore sight, and again, the radar and or the EO are going to scan inside this. But this time, it's attached to my helmet, and therefore, it tracks wherever I look. So if I wanted to lock a target, I would hover there. We can tell we've got the helmet-mounted track engaged there. Apart from that, everything's the same. I will lock up again. Target locked, and you can see we've got the usual stuff, the IFF and the range bar back. Okay, let's go to our next mode, which is, if I can get it, 6. 6 is longitudinal aiming mode. So this is a very simplistic mode compared to the ones that we've been looking at before. We're no longer using the sensors on the aircraft, i.e. the IRST or the radar. We are now using the sensor directly from the IR seeking missiles themselves, so whichever missile selected, this is essentially its center bore sighted to this cross here. And what I would do is I would basically hover this over the target to sense his heat and fire. But regards to symbology, there's nothing here that's new apart from it saying longitudinal mode here. Next, we're going to look at seven. Seven is air to ground mode, IAS up here, otherwise, everything is as we've seen it before. This will be a range in scale when we have a target selected and this is telling us it's in ground mode. Now there's quite a lot to ground mode, probably too much to go through for this video, but in all of the ground attack videos, the bombing videos and the rocket mode videos and whatnot that I've got, I'll go deep into this symbology in the relevant video. And finally, number eight is our old fashioned Russian site. Now I have no idea how to use this or any inclination of learning how to use this but this is a mode that's in a lot of the Russian aircraft that can be used for all sorts of targeting. Presumably it's there in case your other modes fail and this is a backup. Okay so that's all I've got to say on the hub modes and hub symbology. I hope that helps and see you later.